Well, good afternoon. It's about 4.10 on uh, the Saturday of Easter weekend. I hope you um, took some time to reflect on, on Good Friday. One of the things I did... I, by the way, I, I'm doing this from the road because I'm, I'm out... Um, I'm out... I'm on River Road in Kaiser, so if you drive by, wave at the green truck with the signs. I, I'm, I'm parked on River Road because I just got through putting up some signs... Uh, been out delivering signs again. Hi, Susie. So many people uh, have been asking for signs. I, you know, I felt so uncomfortable with whether I should do signs or not do signs in this time, uh, this crisis time, whether it was appropriate. You know, it's like, hey, you know, I'm my business is going out of business. My I'm losing my job. All these things that people are saying and telling me every day. And I say, hey, would you like a yard sign? And that felt so insensitive. And I'm still having a little bit of a hard time with that. But what's been fun is that people are, are emailing, messaging, and, and calling and sending me messages and whatnot saying, can I have a yard sign? I'm like, yeah, okay. So I ordered 250 yard signs. And then I knew I, that I had um, from 2014, 2016, 2018 races, I knew that I had about 200 out there somewhere, you know, out in House District 25 somewhere. And um, so, you know, I don't know how many signs I actually have up. I know that I personally have delivered 225 signs. Now, that counts a bunch that I gave to my good friend, Kim Wallace, who's here right now. Uh, Kim Wallace, the former mayor of St. Paul, I gave him uh, some signs to distribute in St. Paul. I gave my good friend Bob Youngman some signs for Newburgh, as well as delivered some signs there. And I'm on my way to Newburgh right now. I'm going to go through St. Paul and Newburgh right now when I get off of this location in Kaiser. But uh, about 225 signs out there. I have 25 left. They're sitting right back here in the back of my truck. And I, I was... Uh, I was, I was shocked. I really didn't think people would want that many signs. And here, let me give you a quick shot of where I'm sitting. And let me turn the camera around here a second. Okay, so there we are. If you know Kaiser at all, you'll know I'm in front of um, uh, Dr. Van Voorhees' office. And there's my good friend Danielle Bethel's signs. And you know what's cool is Danielle Bethel... Um, she texted me and she said, hey, Brian Van Voorhees wants you to put up signs at his place. I was like, sweet, that's new. I, I'd never put signs up before here. So here we are. Okay. So change that. I mean, I think you'd probably rather watch that view than of me, but I'll go around, back around here to me. Um, so anyway, I'm doing a few today. But let me, let me take and talk about the more important things. So, I don't know about you, but um, Good Friday is, though I understand, I'm not, I'm not illiterate, I understand where the Good Friday comes from. Um, I just hate it. I, I hate the day. I, I hate the... I, I've always had a hard time stifling my emotions on Good Friday because of what Jesus did for me. And, um, and when I reflect upon Him on the cross, but especially... I did something yesterday I like to do every year on Good Friday, and that is read all four Gospels accounts. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to read each different account, um, their their version of the account. And as you probably know, Matthew and Mark are very similar. Luke is a little bit different in that Luke told it later, not not right then, but told it quite a bit later, and and was not necessarily a first-hand uh, uh, viewer so to speak. And then, of course, John, who was the beloved. Jesus called him the beloved. And John's version, I, I really enjoy a lot. But regardless of which um, account you read, the, the things that you have to take away are, one, it, it's easy to, to, to reflect and, and think about the beatings and the scourging and the, and the kicking and the punching and the spitting and the all those horrible things that they did to Jesus, both the Jews and the Romans. But what gets me is the absolute loneliness. When you read about him in the Garden of Gethsemane, you, guys, you could even stay and pray with me for five minutes? And three times he had to say that. Three times. The absolute loneliness when he was on the cross and when he just before he died. 
and when he when he said it is finished and when he said um father i i forgive them for they know not what they do but knowing that he was by by taking on the sins of every single person on earth that would ever be born he took on all of our sin onto his body literally and he he was all alone he was separated from god none of us none of us are without god right now even if you don't believe in god god is there and he is in your life and he is doing things but for that moment of time the son of god was without god wow okay and then of course his great mercy and forgiveness that he would on the cross say forgive them for they know not what they do are you kidding me they knew exactly what they were doing Jesus how could you do that how could you be so kind how could you be so loving how could you be so gracious and merciful Jesus what's the matter with you why didn't you call 10,000 angels and come down and just zap everybody and why don't you do that right now because you're a just and loving God thank you Jesus for what you did for me and thank you for what you did for every single person on earth and so right now on this Saturday the day before Easter the day after Good Friday and you know a lot of people talk about you know the three days well, how do you get three days well it's very simple with the Hebrew tradition so Friday night was one Saturday was two Sunday morning that's three they don't there aren't three literal 24-hour periods it's three day parts um, tomorrow morning Jesus rises from the dead and he is alive and well and he was in bodily form yet he was also in what would be our new heavenly form which is a body that can walk through a door if it wants to but if it wants to also it can walk through the wall and appear in a room that's the beauty is jesus gives us a glimpse of what our heavenly bodies will be like one day so that's tomorrow of course easter and we celebrate that and but right now on saturday is sort of the forgotten day and i'm not a theologian and i don't claim to be a theologian I, I, I read the Bible and I'm a little dangerous sometimes but one of the things that I do know is Jesus was in the grave right now he was in the grave his body his body was in the grave but it comes out of the grave tomorrow and and it's perfectly because, because he was the first to be to to rise from the dead and and that's what we will be if we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and Okay, people are going to say, oh, Bill, you know, you're on a, a page that's geared towards political and news and things like that. Well, is there any other good news that I could tell you other than Jesus saves 100%? And all you have to do is stop and say, Lord Jesus, you know what? I've really screwed up. I've done some dumb things in my life. And I, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't want to be separated from you and from the Father. I want to be with you. So, would you come into my life, into my heart, forgive me for what I've done, I repent of those things, and make me a new creature, because I want to live with you forever, and I want to live for you forever. I would just say, if you would just pray that prayer right now, um, you know what, that's going to make tomorrow the greatest day, well, the second greatest day ever, because the best day was today when you said this, when you made that prayer, but the second best day is tomorrow, when you, uh, you, you your new life means you you are raised from the dead just like Christ is so anyway I wanted to bring that message to you on this day before Easter while I'm delivering yard signs it just I, it felt like the right thing to do you know what I mean so um, anyway I don't want to make this long um, God bless you everybody uh, you know and, and if you um, don't believe in, in God, you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He will save you from your sins and He will come into your heart and, 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 and change your life drastically. If you don't believe that, it, it's okay. It's okay. I, I wish you would because I want to be with every single one of you one day. If something were to happen and tomorrow I were to drop dead, you were to drop dead, do you know for sure where you're going? Do you know for sure what goes on? Well, okay, that's enough preaching, sorry. Um, blessings upon you, blessings upon you, and um, if you see me driving up and down River Road right now,
give me a honk. I, there was a couple of honks going this just now as I went by. I'm out delivering signs. So I'm going to make a drive to Newburgh, St. Paul and Newburgh. So see you very soon. Um, God bless you. Have a wonderful Easter with your family. Know this, know this, know this. If you're right now very depressed and very down on the fact that you can't go to church tomorrow, know this. God is doing something really amazing. I think he is rebirthing the church through this whole online video thing. So churches are, are doing um, the Facebook Live videos and, and other kinds of videos, and more people are watching church on their video players than probably ever went to church. And have you ever thought about this is how smart God is. Like he's not just smart, he's ultimately smart, like, right? He's so smart that he's saying, okay, you people haven't been going to church like you really should. Not the church is everything, but I think it's important. Don't, get, don't, don't forsake the gathering of the people. There's lots of scriptures we could talk about. I think that's Hebrews 10, 24. Um, but God, I could see God saying, you, can't, you, bet, you guys haven't been going to church. Um, you know, uh, maybe we make it, though I don't think God does this, uh, he says maybe we make it so that you can't go to church and uh, maybe you'll have to watch it on videos. And then when we do open things back up, you're going to go, I miss church so much. I was watching it in my PJs from my sofa at home. I can't wait to go back to church. Did you ever think that maybe God just might be in control and know exactly what he's doing? Of course I miss all my brothers and sisters at church. I miss it so much. I miss the hugs and the shake, the handshakes and, 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 the, and the just, I, I miss everybody so much. But God is in control and he's got this thing. He knows exactly what he's doing. Holy cow. He created the earth and the universe and everything with just saying it. Be so. And it was. <laughs> he's God. Okay. All right. Enough. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Happy Easter.